So today we are talking about seven Thanksgiving tips to keep your waistline trim. So if you are new to this video or this channel or this page, my name is Nicole Simonin and I am the owner of Shape It Up Fitness. I am a fitness professional. I am a personal trainer. I was a former professional ballet dancer. I also have a degree in physical therapy and what else? I think that's enough, isn't it? <laughs> um, but I dive into nutrition. We work on obviously exercise, but we also deal with mindset when it comes to clients because I feel like the exercise is definitely important and the food is definitely important. But if you do not have your mindset in the right spot, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, you could do a 12 week program and lose weight, but then you just gain it back because you didn't learn the things that you needed to learn in order to sustain it. So one of the things we are talking about today is seven Thanksgiving tips to keep your waistline trim. All right. So, the holidays are here, in case you didn't know. If you're in the United States, they usually start with Halloween. And what I find very frustrating is, is when I go into a store and it's Halloween, they already have Christmas stuff out. Like in order to get Halloween stuff or Christmas stuff, you have to shop six months in advance. And I'm not ready to shop for Halloween or Christmas. I'm not even ready to shop for Christmas yet. So, sorry, a little side rant about how the holidays are no longer specific holidays like months. All right, so over the next two months, basically, the average person will gain anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of weight. Okay, so we got office parties, we got holiday parties, you've got your favorite foods that you never eat um, ever, so we feel like we need to eat all of them. Um, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of parties that you feel like you can't say no to. And those 10 to 15 pounds can easily get packed on. So Thanksgiving is one of those holidays that is known for overeating, right? Have you ever heard of the turkey coma? We always joke about that. Um, yes, they say there is something in turkey that makes us a little bit more sleepy, but is it that or is it because we ate just too much food? Um, so you can still enjoy Thanksgiving and have the foods that you want to eat and not get so stuffed that you feel sick or you have to unbutton your pants to give her more room or anything like that. If you are pretty focused throughout the entire year on your fitness goals, one day is not gonna kill all your work that you've done. The problem comes in is when you are taking every day as a like a cheat meal or you're just overindulging every day that's when thanksgiving will put you way over the edge um i apologize if you hear some banging in the background we're having some construction done um in the house and every now and then my dog is gonna bark ferociously too she's a little 15 pound nugget so <laughs> but she's got a deep bark so i apologize if you hear that in advance all right so let's get on to the seven thanksgiving tips to keep your waistline trim so number one, sit at the table. This is the only time you need to be sitting when dinner is being served. Before your festivities begin for the day, make sure you get your customized Shape It Up workout done. Get it in through the app. Um, but make sure you get your workout in before you go because what happens is, is, as I have found over the past three weeks, because I have not been as consistent as I would like being sick and then going away on vacation and with the bikini contest being canceled, um, I kind of, I just took three weeks off. I was like, I gotta figure things out. So what I find is, is when I don't work out, my cravings get jacked up, they get higher. And I also, I just don't feel like doing anything. Um, you know, you would think sitting around would make you wanna do something not it's like the opposite effect it's that whole um when an object in is motion when an object is in motion um it stays in motion same thing when an object stays at rest it wants to stay at rest so the best suggestion i can give you is make sure you get your workout in before you head off to thanksgiving um this is going to help curb your appetite and it's going to help you stay focused on your long-term fitness goals um, you could even add a little bit more cardio that day if you anticipate overeating. 
okay? Um, another thought is after your dinner is over, before dessert, go for a walk. This is a great time to get those digestive juices flowing and start digesting your food. Um, the walk does not have to be a marathon, but you can do like 10, 20 minutes, just a casual walk. Go outside if you can, fresh air. Um, you know, this time of year, at least where I'm at, is usually, sometimes it's hot on Thanksgiving, but sometimes it's like a nice crisp air. It's not like too cold where it's snowing, so you never know. <laughs> um, we are in South Jersey, so the weather's a little wonky every now and then but um you don't have to do a marathon just do 10 20 minutes nice casual walk grab somebody to go with you get some fresh air and then come back and have dessert you're gonna feel so much better all right number two tip is conserve your meals prior to going to thanksgiving i usually recommend to my clients to eat a little bit more protein and less carbohydrates so why is that because most of the time Thanksgiving meals are, they have plenty of carbohydrates. So when I'm talking carbs, I'm talking starchy carbs. I'm talking mashed potatoes, candied yams, um, all the desserts, you know, they are pretty much loaded with high sugar carbs. Um, so what I usually recommend is that they stick more to protein. So like a breakfast could be egg whites, smoked salmon, you could have a protein shake, and keep your meals a little bit smaller throughout the day. So if you are eating Thanksgiving around two, again, this is a personal preference. Um, I like to eat a couple small meals, like I like my standard breakfast, and then I'll have like a protein shake or something, just to kind of give you a little bit more wiggle room for your calories. It also um, will allow you to not be, my dog, allow you to not be starving when you get to Thanksgiving dinner because um, you don't want to arrive there famished because then you're going to eat everything that you see. All right, so number three is swap out your ingredients. So if you are making a dish, bringing a dish, or if you're hosting, try to swap out your ingredients for a little bit healthier options. So if you're making candied yams, you can cut a little bit back on the butter and the sugar to make it just a little bit healthier. A lot of times this works well and nobody really notices. So you don't have to feel like you have to swap things completely out, um, but this works well for desserts too. A lot of times you can get away with, if it calls for a cup of sugar, you can do three quarters of a cup of sugar and it'll still taste the same. Um, number four kind of ties in with number three. So get creative. When I started hosting Thanksgiving for my family, um, I added in a lot of different recipes that were healthier. And this eliminates the faces and the comments that you're going to get when you just adjust the recipe. So if someone doesn't know what the dish is supposed to taste like, they have an unbiased decision as to whether they like it or not. So for instance, if I were to make scalloped potatoes and I really tweak the ingredients, like use cauliflower instead of potatoes, I don't even know if that's possible, but <laughs> something totally different, people would be like, oh, this does not even taste like scalloped potatoes. So try to make something entirely different so they have no idea, they have nothing to base it on. So um, what I started doing was, um, I make roasted vegetables and oh my gosh, it's so good. I like, I look forward to my roasted vegetables every Thanksgiving because I just think they're so yummy. Um, but nobody has an idea how they're really going to taste because of the combination of vegetables that I'm using and what spices I'm putting on there. All right. So number five for your tips is to let your stomach be your guide, not your brain. When it comes to Thanksgiving, usually it's a set time. You know, everybody sits down at 2 p.m. and we're going to eat. Um, and you have to like ask yourself, are you actually hungry? Are you ready to eat? If your stomach isn't growling, then you're not ready. If your stomach is not growling and it's go time for the turkey, you could get a smaller portion, again, depending if you're doing family style or if you're going up and getting a plate and sitting down. Um, when other people around you though are around you, the peer pressure is going to be on and you're probably going to feel it if you are not in the right mindset. 
Um, I do work on this with clients, especially this time of year. I try to get them um, prepared for what if and how they can handle or tackle whatever obstacle they think they may encounter. Um, so when other people are around you, the peer pressure is on. You're gonna feel like, you're gonna have people saying, well, why aren't you eating? Are you sick? Are you trying to diet again? Um, stuff like that. Or you're too skinny, you need to eat more food. That kind of, all, you're gonna get every end of the spectrum. Don't give in to what everybody is whispering in your ear or what people are thinking about you. It has nothing to do with what your goals are. You have made a commitment, hopefully, to yourself to get through the holidays and lose inches or body fat or whatever your goal is. Make sure you honor your commitment. And if you need help honoring your commitment, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and I'll be happy to help you out. All right, number six. Skip the everyday stuff. Fill your plate with foods that you cannot get every day. If there are donuts there that they got down the street and they're say donut holes um, and you can buy them anytime you want or if somebody brought store-bought cookies that you can go down to the local grocery store and get them at any time you like, don't waste your time on those calories. You can get them anytime you like. Spend your time on the food that you really want to eat. So even though roasted vegetables probably doesn't sound awesome to you, I am so looking forward to the roasted vegetables that I make. And um, so that's going to be a big portion of my food. Um, there's like I make a, um, I don't really like the crust of the pumpkin pie. I know I'm weird. And I, I'm dairy free now. So what I did last year was I actually made the inside of the pumpkin pie because that's my favorite part. And I am looking forward to eating that as well. So have your favorites lined up. You might find that there's something there that you have no idea. Um, a lot of times I go into situations and if I, if it doesn't really look that appealing to me, I don't even want to try it because if I do like it, then I know I'm going to want it. <laughs> so a little burst psychology. So don't waste your calories on everyday stuff. If there's a dessert that me mom makes, only at Thanksgiving time and that's your favorite, go for it. Um, but don't just, uh, the other thing too is be very aware of your eating it. Don't just shovel it in real fast. Um, I do this with my favorite foods too. It takes me, like I have to step back for a second and go, okay, slow down, enjoy it, savor it, see how long you can make the yumminess last. All right, my last tip is skip the sparkly. I know you're, you don't want to hear that, um, but alcohol will pack on the pounds super duper uber fast. First off, alcohol is laden with sugar. I don't care if you think straight vodka is going to help out, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm not saying don't drink. Well, yeah, I kind of am. I, if you could skip the alcohol, I would skip it entirely if you really focused on your goals. If you want to have one, whatever, you get to decide what you want to do. But the reason why I don't like you to drink alcohol is it's going to pack on the pounds. Um, it is laden with sugar. Okay, so that's the first thing. Secondly, your body considers alcohol a poison. So whenever you drink alcohol, it is going to... It's your body's first job is to try and get the alcohol poison out of your body. Um, so in other words, while it's in there trying to get it out, nothing else is getting metabolized. Basically everything has shut down. It's red alert. It's go time. The body is like, nope, we got to get this out and then move on to whatever we need to do. So no food is getting burned off while sitting there. And before you think, well, I'll just drink alcohol on an empty stomach because I I've heard that from clients before, not a good idea. And that brings me to the third part about alcohol is if you are drinking, it is going to lower your inhibitions, which will lead you to saying, screw the weight loss goal and then the overeating will begin. Um, so again, don't think I'm against alcohol because I don't mind having a glass of wine here or there. Um, I may have, usually it's like two or three a year. I don't judge you know, do what you need to do, but just be aware that alcohol is really inhibiting your weight loss 
inches lost goal. If you would like help on avoiding those 10 to 15 pounds this year for the holidays, head over and schedule a free consult with me at shapeitupfitness.com slash call, C-A-L-L, or you can click the link that is um, in the description. See you soon. Remember to get fit, be fierce, and have no limits. I'll see you soon.